and say hello. So good, good afternoon. My name is Courtney Whittington and I work on the IBAMS team at CPG and IBAM stands for Integrated Benefits Account Management Services. So you see why we made an acronym out of that. Uh, I work with Annalyn and other diocesan administrators throughout the year on um, a variety of things, but one of my favorite things is being able to provide this member education every year during annual enrollment. So um, this year, since I know we know that we're all spending a lot of time in Zoom meetings and, and Zoom fatigue is real. So this year we've made an effort to kind of condense this and make sure we're just telling you the absolute most critical information that you need for annual enrollment this year. Um, so like I said, I'll, I'll stop and ask for questions throughout and please feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions. Since we can't travel in real life the way we might be used to, we're gonna look at annual enrollment as sort of a virtual road trip. So there's three parts to the journey. First, we'll just get prepared and to, to hit the road and learn some basics and go through some overview type topics. And then we'll stop and look at some of the roadside attractions along the way, which is really where we'll dig into the details of the plans. And then during that, we'll have a, a pit stop activity where we'll break up into groups and you'll get a feel for how the benefits work with a real scenario. So a little break from just me being a talking head. And then um, at the end, we will hopefully arrive at our destination with all the tools we need to be able to make our decisions for annual enrollment. And then we'll talk about a few of the resources that are available to you if you get lost along the way and need a little roadside assistance. So step one, we'll, we'll prepare for the journey. And when you go on a trip, you pack your bags, put gas in the car, take a look at the map, check the roads and the weather conditions. And so we'll do something similar and just get a lay of the land on all of the different plan types, some of the details about how CDHPs work. And then we'll get a forecast of what's changing and make sure we are oriented to the new landscape of COVID-19. There's some specific COVID-19 changes that you should be aware of. So to help prepare for the annual enrollment journey, um, our website is already open, annual enrollment website, and you can get there by visiting cpg.org slash annual enrollment. And the content is customized for active members, um, retirees, and early retirees. So whichever bucket you fall into, you can click and find all the information that's relevant to you. Today's presentation is, is really geared toward active members, so I, I won't go into any details about the retirees, but all that information is on our website. Um, and again, I'll just be hitting the highlights today, but when you want to take a, that deeper dive and get all the nitty gritty details, our annual enrollment website is a good resource, and there are others that I'll share <laughs> soon. So uh, again, just as we're getting oriented, there are three main plan types to choose from. And so I'll show you where to find all the details, but the first type is a PPO plan. So this is where you have in-network benefits and out-of-network benefits. You don't have to choose a primary care doctor. You don't, you don't usually need to get um, referrals from your doctor and, and that's a PPO plan. And then we have the second type is an EPO plan. And this is all of your Kaiser plans. Um, there's a Kaiser EPO high and a Kaiser EPO 80. And in the Kaiser plan, you're, you only have network coverage unless it's an emergency and you need to stay within the Kaiser network for all of your care uh, if you want the services to be covered. And then the third type is a consumer directed health plan and Anthem has consumer directed health plan options and Kaiser also has a consumer directed health plan. And these work a little differently. They have a higher deductible, but you're also eligible to participate in a health savings account. And this account is tax advantaged in three ways. So the money that you put in is tax free. And then once you get to a certain balance in your health savings account, you can invest that money and any earnings that you receive from your very wise investments are also tax free. And then when you go to pay for your health expenses and you withdraw the funds, as long as you're using them for approved healthcare expenses, that's also tax free. 
So you, your employer, and if you're lucky, your rich aunt Mabel can make contributions to that account and uh, you can set, set that money aside. It doesn't go away. Some, some flexible spending accounts have a flexible spending accounts, have a deadline and you have to use the money by a certain time, but this money is always yours until you withdraw it. And since it has those advantages, there are limits to how much can be deposited in the account each year. So these numbers on the slide are, are the limits for you and your employer, and if you're lucky, your rich Aunt Mabel. So if you're enrolled in a CDHP as a single person, you can only have $3,600 deposited into your account in a given year. Um, you have until the tax filing deadline of the following year to reconcile that. And if you have a CD, one of the CDHPs I'll talk about today and your HSA is through health equity, which, which it should be, um, you'll be able to log into their portal and see your account balance at any time. So it's really easy to keep track of. And so with that landscape sort of framed for us, um, it's time to look down the road and see what's changing for 2021. And the good news is that the only changes are additions and, and positive things, and an awful lot is staying the same. So first, we have that hearing benefit that, that we all need now. I know. <laughs> um, hearing benefit for both active employees and retirees. Um, in the past, only retirees had a benefit that was paid, and active employees just had access to a discount program. So. We'll, the next slide has the details. Um, we'll also, we, we've revamped our communications. So the mailings that we send out for annual enrollment are a little larger and more colorful. Our website is hopefully going to be more easy, user-friendly and easy to navigate as well. And then what's not changing is everything else. So if you don't want to change and you like the plan you have, it will continue exactly the way it is today in 2021, just at the new 2021 rates. So here's the detail on the hearing benefit. Uh, like I said, today, you only have access to a discount program beginning on January 1st for all of our plans, um, you have actual hearing benefits and it's a maximum benefit of $1,500 per ear every three years. And this is coordinated through the medical plan now. So you won't have to find a separate program and log into something else or have a different ID. If you're in an Anthem plan, you'll use the Anthem network of providers. And if you're in a Kaiser plan, you'll use the Kaiser network of providers. So we think this is really good news for everyone. And the other big change ahead is, is, is really one we're in the middle of, which is COVID-19. Um, so earlier this year, we made a change to our plans to waive member cost share for COVID-19 evaluation and testing. And we also waived member cost share for the treatment of COVID-19, as long as you're seeing network providers for these services. And so this will stay in place through December 31st of next year, of, of 2021, um, this, this provision will remain in place. And we're also continuing to monitor the approval of vaccines. So there's no update today, but we are keeping a close eye on this and, and we'll, you know, we'll be sure to keep you informed. And of course, you'll also want to consult with your healthcare professionals about any vaccinations. And then one more road condition to be aware of is the, the landscape around telehealth. So both Anthem and Kaiser have telehealth platforms where you can log into their systems and see one of the doctors that's offering services through that platform. So it's kind of like Uber. You don't necessarily get to pick what car, um, but there are you know, many cars who can provide you a ride, or in this case, many doctors who can give you services. And so we've seen a big increase in telehealth visits since the pandemic, and it's a really valuable service for when you can't get to the doctor. Uh, and those telehealth visits can be for medical care as well as behavioral health. And so with COVID, uh, it, it's had an impact on telehealth as well. So there are really two types of visits to be aware of and, and it's easy to get them confused. So the first one is 
true telehealth that I just described that's through the platforms. So for Anthem, it's called Live Health Online and Kaiser has their own platform as well. So those visits through those platforms were waiving your member cost share, your copay or whatever you, you would have paid, uh, we're waiving that completely. So whether it's related to COVID or not, if you log into, if you're in an Anthem plan and you log into Live Health Online and, and you see a doctor, or if I see a doctor for the rash on my elbow, um, that won't cost me anything because I'm using the Live Health Online telehealth platform. The other kind of visit is a virtual visit. So many providers now, because they can't see patients in person or, or there are a variety of reasons why it might not make sense to have an in-person visit, many doctors are offering virtual visits and that might be through Zoom or GoToMeeting or over the phone or FaceTime or Skype or any of those platforms. So a visit with your doctor is now going to be covered by the plan. That used to be excluded. You, you, we, there wouldn't be any coverage for it, but now those virtual visits will, be, um, will cost you the same that they would have cost you if you had gone in person. So if you would have paid a copay, you'll pay a copay again. Um, any questions about telehealth and virtual visits or anything that I've said so far? Quick temperature check. Uh, yes. Um uh, the Neil Tadkin, uh, is that a, may I continue? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I, I noticed, for example, my, my primary providers are through the UCLA system and they have their own sort of telehealth <laughs> thing set up. So I'm assuming that that is then um, just like the, um, uh, that that since they have that, that's how I do all of my telehealth rather than go through Blue Cross Blue Shield and then try and do a telehealth because I'm not sure that they're connected to that. Right. So Live Health Online is uh, is the one that's at no cost, and that's with with doctors that you probably don't know. It would be odd, and you know, it would be a a, a rare coincidence for that to be with the doctor that you know. So that's the one that's at no cost. What you're describing is the virtual visit. And so you would pay copays for those visits the same way that you would if you saw them in person. We used to not cover you for that, but now because of COVID-19, we do. So you can see your providers through the UCLA network in that way, as long as they're in the net in network providers, right? Um, you can see them in that way and pay the copay that you would have normally paid. Does that? I, yeah, okay. I understand Perfect. that. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else before I move on? Courtney, this is Lyris. Um, the live health online, you said there's no cost to that. Is that just for the remainder of 2020 or it's, is that going to continue in 2021? It's 2020 and 2021. So through December 31st of next year. Okay, great. Thank you. You bet. All right. Uh, so Courtney, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, my concern regarding integrated medicine, probably we may not going to take any medications, uh, but the only thing is like a uh, wellness and uh, um, like what they educational, say one hour education. And also they, they give a little bit, uh, um, uh, it's not a medication, but it is uh, a certain kind of, uh, uh, what is the medication? Supplements uh, and, and it, it, it's not, a, I forgot. Um, that's so that is not the medication at all, but it's like a kind of a dietary kind of a supplements, you know, that kind of a things will like expensive dietary supplements, whether uh, this particular, uh, um, the dietary supplements is included uh, in your, because when I talk to them, it is not included, the medical trust, they said. So, so I have to be really careful about quoting your benefits to, you, to your specific situation. So, um, so what I would recommend is that you, you either contact um, the, the number on the back of your card to kind of talk through your specific circumstances because I, I wouldn't be able to, to give you that specific of advice um, and, and have that conversation with Anthem directly or with Kaiser directly about what's covered. Okay. Your mileage may vary, so I, <laughs> I, 
I don't, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't, they're much better at their job than I am at their job. I'm, I'm pretty good at mine, but they, they're, they're better at but, theirs. But the express script, they, they declined. They said, no, we, they don't cover because they were always sending a continuous uh, uh, the letters, but uh, we are not participating in any kind of uh, this thing, what they are asking. But yeah. the integrated medicine is only dietary supplements, probably it's not any medication. So that's the reason I asked uh, uh, Express Script, but that go on, on and on, on and all. They will not give the correct answer. I can take back your your overall question and, and uh, about integrated integrated medicine and, and supplements and that sort of thing. And, and we can try to circle up later. Um, I will talk about the express, express scripts benefits and the prescription benefits, but as far as like individual exclusions and things like that, I'm just out of my depth. So I will take that back and, and, um, and make sure that I, that we're able to connect later so we can make sure you get some, get on the phone with someone who can answer that question. Thank you, Courtney. You're welcome. Uh, okay, so so this is where we're going to, excuse me, <clears throat> I think I need a, a sip of water, one sec. Okay, that's better. Um, this is where we're going to stop uh, and, and along the way to our ultimate destination of annual enrollment and, and look at some of the roadside attractions, which are the medical plans, the prescription plans, and the EAP benefits as well. Oh my goodness, has my presentation not been progressing? Are you all oh, still in the titles? Yeah. Okay, you see an orange, see it. it says roadside yeah. attractions, right? Okay, my, good. my screen isn't, isn't okay. Um, so EAP benefits, and then I can't see, there's something blocking part of my screen. So the other two things that are written on this slide. <laughs> um, that's odd, my, that's gonna be tricky. Okay, so as we make this, these stops and, and take our photos and learn about the details, uh, there's some questions that you might wanna keep in mind. So first, how are you using your plan today? Um, maybe you have a chronic healthcare condition. Um, maybe you use your plan extensively. Maybe you don't use your plan very much and you're pretty healthy and you'd like to figure out a way to set some money aside for a rainy day when maybe you, you will have some healthcare expenses. And then maybe out of network coverage is really important to you. So there, there might be a provider that it's really important for you to be able to see and you'll wanna understand how your choice, particularly between Anthem and Kaiser would impact that. And then the second thing you'll want to think about is your out-of-pocket costs. So would you rather, um, you'll want to think about your, the money that you spend when you go to get care, as well as the money that you might be spending each month to buy up to a higher plan. So your employer might cover you uh, for the PPO 80, but you'd really like to be in the PPO 100, so you're going to buy up to that higher plan. Um, would you rather pay a little more each month in premium? Or would you rather pay a little more when you go to see the doctor and not have to pay a little more each month? So think, think about, keep those questions in the back of your head as we go through the rest of the presentation today. And so the first roadside attraction that we'll start with is the Anthem PPO 90. And we'll take a, a deeper look at this one so you have an idea of how to think about these summaries. But then we'll go a little more quickly through the others so that we can get to that exercise and you can get the sort of hands-on feel for how the plants work. So the first thing you wanna pay attention to is the deductible. And this is the amount, excuse me, this is the amount that you will pay out of pocket before the coinsurance kicks in. So you're probably super familiar with this when you think about your car insurance, where, where you'll pay the first $500 or first $1,000 of a repair before the insurance kicks in and starts paying on your behalf. So same kind of thing with your medical plan. And the next thing you'll wanna look at is the copay. So this is a fixed amount that you pay for a covered service. Most often it's going to be for an office visit, but there are other things that have copays too. And if a service has a copay, you don't have to meet the deductible first. You, you go to see your doctor on January 1st, you'll pay the copay. And then coinsurance is where you pay a certain percentage of the cost. And this is where deductibles are really important because you'll pay 100% of the cost until you meet the deductible and then your coinsurance will kick in after that. 
And then last but not least, you'll want to look at the out-of-pocket out of limit. So this is the maximum that you would ever have to pay for covered services in a calendar year. And it's through a combination of medical care, prescription costs, and behavioral health. And there's separate um, out-of-pocket limits and deductibles for network and out-of-network providers. So those, those two things don't combine, but it does include, again, prescriptions, behavioral health, and medical expenses. And so, uh, oops, okay. And so the next roadside attraction, we're gonna jump around a little bit, is the Anthem CDHP 15. And CDHPs work a little bit differently from PPOs and EPOs in that there are no copays in a CDHP plan. So everything is coinsurance until you've met your deductible and you'll pay 100% of the cost until you meet that $1,400 for an individual deductible. Remember though, that you also have a health savings account to help you fund that, that deductible and your employer's contributions, your contributions and your rich aunt Sally or Mabel can help to pay uh, for that deductible. A really important thing to understand about the CDH, CDHP 15 is how the deductible works if you're enrolled in a family plan. So I'm gonna go back to the PPO 90. If you're an individual enrolled in the PPO 90, your in-network deductible, deductible is $500. If you're enrolled as a family, and so Fred, Wilma, and Pebbles are enrolled in the PPO 90, and Wilma uh, meets her $500, $500 deductible, she'll only pay coinsurance for the, for the rest of her services for just Wilma. Fred and Pebbles will have to meet their deductible before they'll start paying coinsurance. On the CDHP 15 though, if you're enrolled as an individual, your deductible is only $1,400. But if you're in the plan with your family, you have to meet the whole $2,800 before the coinsurance kicks in. So Fred and Wilma and Pebbles, if Wilma spends $1,400 for her health care, she has to get to $2,800 before the coinsurance kicks in. And the CDHP 15 is the only one that works this way. And the reason is that it's a high deductible health plan, a consumer directed health plan. And in order to meet those IRS requirements, that's to, to be eligible for a health savings account. That's how that has to work. So I wanna make sure uh, that that makes sense. Does anyone have questions about the difference for how that works for the CDHP 15? Okay. And then the other CDHPs uh, on the Anthem side are the only difference you'll see is the deductible, the out-of-pocket limit, and the coinsurance. I'll go up a little bit for the 20, and then they'll do this. Um, you know, my slides seem to be a little bit out of order, so <laughs> I apologize for that. The CDHP 40 um, has 40% coinsurance and just a higher deductible and out-of-pocket limit. So then you have your Kaiser. Yeah, mm -hmm. Annalyn. Now, if you're enrolled in a CDHP plan that has an HSA uh, savings account associated with it, because the premium that the employer pays on the CDHP is cheaper, um, the uh, recommendation by our insurance committee is that the employer pays a uh, fund um, half of the deductible, the annual deductible. So, uh, for example, what Courtney was saying in the CDHP uh, Maybe go back to one spin. Uh, on yes. The so this one on the CDHP 20, the uh, deductible is 2800 for individual and 5450 for the um, family plan. So if someone is enrolling in this plan, the employer is uh, supposed to pay half of this deductible towards an HSA account. And so if you need more details on that, I will be more than happy to assist with it. Thanks, Hannah Lynn. And I, I'm actually going to go back one, one more slide. I, I, I think maybe the slides are missing, so I apologize for that. But don't worry, because we're going to dive in deeper uh, all together in a minute. Um, there's also an Anthem PPO 100, which doesn't have any coinsurance. Everything is a copay, and there's no deductible. There's the PPO 80, which is 20% coinsurance. The copays are all the same, but the deductible and the out-of-pocket limit are a little higher. And then the PPO 70, same, same kind of thing. The coinsurance is 30% is instead of 20 or 10 or zero. Um, and then the deductible and out-of-pocket limit are a little higher. So 
I promise you'll get to see those details in a minute. So this brings us to the Kaiser plans. And uh, the, the important thing to know about the Kaiser plans is that you only have network coverage unless it's an emergency. So you'll notice that the, um, the, the, the amount on the right side where it says out of network is not covered for everything except emergency. And so if you're in an emergency, the last thing we want is for you to be worrying about what hospital they're taking you to, right? Like get the care that you need, make sure you're safe and taken care of, and those services that you need in an emergency will be covered at the network rate. So this is the EPO high. It's a lot like the Anthem 100 in that there's no coinsurance, it's all co-pays, and there's no deductible. And then the EPO 80 is a lot like the Anthem PPO 80. And then there's also a Kaiser CDHP that's a lot like the Anthem CDHP. So, so we, 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 I know we got a high level overview of the plans and, and now we're gonna take a look at the prescription benefits and we, we're not gonna slow, we're gonna slow down the car, but we're not gonna necessarily get out and take a lot of pictures. Again, we're, we're gonna try to get you out of here uh, at a reasonable hour today. So um, those who choose, and this shouldn't say PPO 90, it should just say Anthem PPO. Those who choose an Anthem PPO, any of the four Anthem PPOs, and gosh, Annalyn, this is the standard slide instead of the premium slide. My goodness. So we're gonna, we're gonna skip this. <laughs> and if you're in an Anthem CDHP, and the example here is the CDHP 20, um, this is what your prescription benefits will look like if you're in an Anthem CDHP. So the only thing that changes is the deductible. And um, so the, the 20, it's 2,800. For the 15, it's 1,400. These percentages are the same. And so the three tiers, generic, preferred name, um, non-preferred name. So a generic medication, we probably understand what that means. It's something that's been on the market for a long time. It's very inexpensive. It's not under patent anymore. Brand names still have patents, so they cost a little bit more. And then non-preferred are the medications that uh, you probably see advertised on TV. So those are the most expensive. And there is a retail and home delivery pharmacy. So I'll go back to this one. It's easier to see on this one. Um, the retail pharmacy is really designed for those medications that you're not going to be taking for a long time. So maybe you need some steroids to get over a cold or sinus infection or something. Uh, so, so that you would get that filled at the retail pharmacy. You're limited to only three fills of a prescription at the retail level, and then you need to transfer to home delivery. And that's not a bad thing because you get three months for the price of two and a half months. You save a little bit of money. And so home delivery is really good for those maintenance medications that you know work for you and that you're gonna be taking for a long time. And then on the Kaiser side, there are only the, the, there are fewer tiers of medications, but it's very similar in terms of structure and copays and all that stuff, except that you get three months for the price of two months when you switch to home delivery. And the copays are just slightly different between the EPO high and the EPO 80. So one more thing about prescriptions um, with Express Scripts. So this is the Anthem, the Anthem folks. If you have a prescription that is uh, for treating COVID-19, Express Scripts granted a, a, a one-time delivery exception. So um, just for, not a, I'm sorry, not a one-time, but a, a limited exception. So during this time, the Walgreens and CVS pharmacy can deliver those prescriptions through their mail-in pharmacy. So, uh, so if you're sick and you just want the thing and they can bring it to you from down the street, you can do that. Uh, as long as this exception is in place. And when it isn't in place any longer, Express Scripts will reach out to folks who are affected. And then the, the, the last roadside attraction before we break up and do our activity is just to talk about the EAP. So the EAP is through Cigna. Whether you have a Kaiser plan or an Anthem plan, the EAP is through Cigna. And everyone enrolled in a medical trust plan has access to the EAP. And if you're enrolled as a single person only with no dependents, everyone in your household can still use those benefits. So it's a, it's a really great thing to know about, um, something we always wanna make sure we remind you that you have. 
the most famous uh, benefit is the 10 free face-to-face -face counseling sessions per issue. And, and in, in today's climate, those, those could be virtual as well. Um, if the stress of working from home is getting to you, I recommend that you contact the EAP. Now, it's really helpful if you, if when they give you your list of providers, they're going to be the Cigna network of providers. So it's always a good idea to bump that list up against the Anthem network if you're in an Anthem plan so that you can see a provider that might be in both networks. That way, if you really like them after 10 sessions, you can keep seeing them and just continue. Um, there are a variety of other things that the EAP can help with. And we actually have a brochure. It's called 100 Reasons to Call the EAP. And I'm going to put a link to that in the chat right now, as soon as I find the chat. <laughs> um, so you can, you can take a look. They can help you find pet care and child care, elder care, access community resources. There are certain kinds of legal and financial assistance and guidance that they can, not assistance really, but guidance that they can provide. They're really great with disaster recovery resources as well. So take a look at that brochure. If there's something that's keeping you up at night, call the EAP. Um, and you can call or you can go to the website, mysigna.com. You'll have to register the first time. Um, but you can access those resources, a lot of resources online, actually. So this is just a glimpse of what their website looks like. And in addition to the EAP, of course, you have, as I alluded to, you have behavioral health coverage, mental health, substance abuse coverage through the medical plan as well. So um, details for how to connect with that will depend on whether you choose Anthem or Kaiser. And it's important to remember that some services will require pre-authorization. So you'll just want to call the number on the back of your card if you have any questions about that. Um, and this is also helpful for when you've exhausted your 10 free sessions. So deep breath, we're almost there. Um, <laughs> there are two websites that I want to make you aware of. So the first is our website, cpg.org slash mtdocs. And you can find all of the summaries of benefits and coverage and the longer plan documents there uh, if, you have, if, you want, if you want to get the full, full details of the plans. But where I want to take you is, oops, is actually, I just have to peek around the corner here. There we go. Um, to the diocesan website because Anna Lynn has done a fantastic thing. Whoa. -oh. Okay, good. Here we are. It's, it's loading. Anna Lynn has done a fantastic thing in making sure that you have easy access to all the annual enrollment information on the diocesan website. So if you go to diocesela.org, and we're, we're on the page, but I'll just show you. You click on the little hamburger menu, slow, scroll down to human resources, and then click on employee benefits. It will bring you to this page here, which I just loaded. And so you'll find the annual enrollment guide, you'll find the healthcare benefits information booklet, which has everything in it. Uh, so it, 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 everything <laughs> is in there. And then you'll also find a, a plan comparison chart. So you can see all the plans side by side um, and compare uh, you can compare deductibles, out-of-pocket limits, co-pays for all the different services. The plan comparison guide has Anthem PPOs on the first page, Anthem CDHPs on the second page, and then the Kaiser plans on the third page. There's also prescription detail, which I am, am going to go to because I gave you the wrong slide. Um, so for the Diocese of Los Angeles, you're in this premium plan here if you're in an Anthem PPO plan. And so here you can see what your actual copays are. And so I'm gonna sneak back over to our presentation. I think I need to just close that, okay. And I've lost my screen, there we go, all right. <laughs> So we're gonna shift gears a little bit now, um, give, give my voice a break and give you guys a chance to put all of this information into practice and see how the plans would work in an example scenario. So we have the story of skiing with Miss Smythe. And so Miss Smythe loves to ski and, oops, 
And unfortunately, on one of her ski trips, she falls and hurts her knee. She goes to the emergency room, she gets x-rays and bandages, she's given pain medication. And then once she gets home, she sees her primary care doctor who refers her to an orthopedic specialist who recommends an MRI and some blood work and ultimately an outpatient laparoscopy procedure. She returns home to recover with a 10 day prescription for a brand name pain reliever. And after four weeks on crutches, 15 physical therapy sessions and four sessions with her mental health therapist, Miss Smythe is fine to resume normal activities and she's back on the slopes. So the activity is what portion of the costs will she pay? So this slide here, I'm just gonna build it all out. Here we go. Um, this shows what the costs would be if she was just paying out of her pocket. So for the sake of, of this exercise, we'll say that this is the negotiated rate. Um, and, and so this is, this is what she would pay if she didn't have any insurance at all. So what we're going to do is I'm going to break us up into three groups. And um, let's see, let's see how many folks we have. Put a couple more in that group. Um, some of you will go with Zach and you will have the chance to look at the summary of benefits and coverage for the CDHP 15. And you'll just work through this example and figure out how much of these things would cost. Talk amongst yourselves, pick a person to report back to the group. And, and if you're, if you've, you know, no worries, if there's mistakes, we're gonna, we're gonna learn it all together. So no pressure. Um, but so group one is gonna go with Zach and you'll have the CDHP 15. And then group two, is going to go with um, with my iPad, where <laughs> where hopefully this will work, um, where where we will have the PPO ninety. So I'm going to be kind of in two groups at once. So we'll have the PPO ninety, and we'll take a look at this example. And and you guys, I'm going to let you guys do it. You guys will figure out what you think everything costs. Pick someone to report back to the group, and then group three will stay with me in the main room with this version of me in the main room, and we'll have the PPO one hundred. So we're on the home stretch. We are almost to our destination. And um, so we're gonna keep going. Uh, there are no changes to any of the dental plans this year. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the details with you. Um, I do have slides for that and I can answer questions if you all have questions. But all of our dental plans include three routine cleanings and screenings every year. So my dentist never believes me. I mean, when I get a new dentist, my, she believes me now. But, um, but when I go see a new dentist and I say I get three, they never believe me. I always have to remind them to call and verify and confirm that in fact I do get three. And, and we all do if we're enrolled in one of the Cigna dental plans and, uh, and those are at no cost. Um, you can access Cigna Dental through mycigna.com. You can go online and look at providers, look at coverage, download an ID card, and of course you can also give them a call. There are three plans, a preventive plan that really covers um, the, the most basic things. So the preventive plan covers um, basic restorative services, which would be f something like a filling. And then the basic plan covers more for major restorative services. So that would be, um, that would be something like a root canal. And then the dental and orthodontia plan provides coverage for braces. So any questions about dental? Again, it's all the same as last year. And then vision, no changes here either. You have a free eye exam every year. So you get three dental cleanings, a free eye exam, and a free um, preventive care visit with your primary care doctor. So that's five preventive visits every year that we all get for being enrolled in these plans. Um, and you have $150 allowance toward glasses or contact lenses. And then there's discounts on more advanced kinds of lenses and other kinds of procedures. To access information about IMED, you can, you can go to, you can look in that health information booklet on the diocesan website. There's some information there. You can also go to IMED, imedvisioncare.com slash ECMT, and that stands for Episcopal Church Medical Trust, if that helps make it easier to remember. And uh, here's just, sure. Question about the, the, um, the vision um, uh, services. I, I, 
I have found sometimes that it's just cheaper to go to, um, you know, after you've gotten your eye exam, if you're going to get glasses, just to go to Costco and then do the out of network reimbursement for it, because it seems no matter what, the, the frames and the lenses and all the other stuff always ends up being way more expensive through iMed. And iMed is like the only eye plan, <laughs> I mean, that it seems that Costco does not uh, use. Has there been any discussion about going to something like VSP instead or one of the other major iMed eye, eye plans? You know, our, our benefits policy team takes a look at these things every year. I don't, I don't have any specific information about whether or not they're considering other, you know, other options. Certainly not for 2021. Um, though I do believe that there is a mechanism for adding providers, which when, it, when it's someone very large like Costco, that, that's probably a little bit trickier. But like if I found a, a, an eye doctor that I really liked, there's a form and a way to kind of you know, suggest they get into the network. I will take that back though, as, as some feedback that, that Costco is a gap for, for at least for those in, Cal in Southern California. Um, thank you for, for raising that. And also um, uh, the VSP and IMED, uh, Costco, they, they don't take a both, but uh, the Costco is a far uh, you know, more cheaper than the VSP as well as uh, IMED. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, Costco does take VSP now. They take a DVSP, but when I contacted uh, six months ago, they said they they don't take. Oh, or maybe they had to eliminate it. I don't know. Hmm. Courtney, is um, does Kaiser is IMED under Kaiser? IMED is if you're in a Kaiser plan, you still have IMED. Okay. So yeah, thank you, everybody. Okay. So we, we've stopped along the way. We've taken a look at all the roadside attractions. We, we really got out and, <laughs> and spent some time. And now we're at our destination of annual enrollment. So the last step for, for annual enrollment is for you to make a decision, right? And your annual enrollment session in the Diocese of Los Angeles will run from October 28th to November 18th. And this green envelope, if it hasn't already arrived, should be arriving any minute. They, they were mailed on October 14th. And inside that envelope, you will find the, the brochure that's pictured on the screen. And it contains your client ID, which can be helpful for logging into the website. If you have your client ID and your login and you already know how to access mycpg.org, you don't need this letter. But if, you, if, you, you know, if you've misplaced that information, it's here. And if you're having trouble logging in for any reason, you can contact our client services team and they'll be able to help you log in. And I'll, I'll share some contact information in a minute. And then if you were hired after August 14th, we didn't know about you in time to send you this mailing. So we, we froze that mailing list in August. And so if that's your situation, reach out to Anna Lynn and she can help you take care of your annual enrollment manually. Um, once you're ready to make your choice, you can go to our website at uh, annualenrollment.cpg.org. The URL that I shared earlier is cpg.org slash annualenrollment. And that takes you to where all the information is. You can find a link to the login there, but if you're ready to just log in, it's annualenrollment.cpg.org. And if you get lost along the road, um, either during annual enrollment or any time throughout the year, there are three resources that I wanna make sure you know about. So the first one is the Anthem, is the care management program through Anthem. And so Kaiser, as you may know, has a little bit of a different model where all of your providers are within the Kaiser ecosystem. And so it's a little bit easier perhaps to coordinate care and for those different providers to work together and share information. With Anthem, you might have providers that are part of different medical systems. And so Anthem's care management service can be a really incredible resource for helping to coordinate care and navigate some of the complexity of the healthcare system. So if you have a chronic condition or if you get a scary diagnosis 
or if you have a procedure coming up, uh, Anthem's health guides are there to support you. And I had surgery last fall and someone reached out to me and said, hey, we see you're having a surgery and you, you know, give me an idea of some things to prepare around the house so I'd be ready to recover. And then after the surgery, they called to see how I was doing. And it was really nice. It was a, it was a registered nurse that called to make sure I was recovering all right and that I had everything I needed. Um, you can get in touch with the health guides by calling the number on the back of your ID card, and they'll also do some proactive, re proactive outreach. But um, if they haven't reached out to you and you would like to engage with this program, you're more than welcome to give them a call. It's free. It's included in your plan. Um, and they can also help with things like pre-authorizations um, and making sure that you have all of that documentation in order um, and, and answer any questions that you have about your coverage. Um, I have a question. Um, I was looking at the um, the monthly benefit rates, you know, of, um, for you know, comparing the different plans. And uh, on this one, I don't see uh, what it uh, if you have a spouse that's uh, on uh, medic uh, on uh, Medicare already, uh, who's of retirement age. I don't see the rates for that. Um, Neil? Yes. It's actually on there, but uh, somebody already found an error on it. So we have to pull that out and have, um, you know, CPG correct the rates. Uh, there's some trans transpose figures on it, but it's actually there. When you look at the rate sheet, the first that section on the right will be the active plan and down below it says MSP. Uh-huh. That, that will be what, where the rates are. Unfortunately, there's some transport figures on it, if you notice. Some oh, I, yes, I see that, exactly. Yeah. Yes, so, so the- um, Someone printed yes. it out already while we were having a session today. So okay. we have to correct the, the rates. Right, right. It's clear that the 90 should not be cheaper than the 70, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so sorry about that. that uh, Hopefully by tomorrow morning, it's all, you know, all possible correctly. Okay. Good questions. Um, the second resource is, is the Health Advocate, and we've been in partnership with them for a long time. You've had access to the Health Advocate for a long time. And as the health plans like Anthem have improved their care management program, we, we used to send you to Health Advocate for everything. And now we really recommend that you contact Health Advocate specifically when you have issues with a claim. If you have questions about how a claim was paid or why it was paid a certain way, or if you'd like to start the process of appealing, the Health Advocate is a really great resource for you for that and you can visit them online you can also call them tell tell your story to one person who will follow your case to resolution and keep in touch with you until it's solved and then last but not least um, we at the church pension group are at your service and in particular our client services team is there to support you so if you're having trouble navigating all of this information um, if you're not sure who to call you can call our client services team and they'll be able to point you in the direct in the right direction and connect you with with whatever you need help with um, I am about to put in the chat one more resource, and I know we have some questions and comments and things in the chat, so I'll get to those too. Um, but it's an at-a-glance contact card. So this card has all of the contact information for CPG's client services and, and all the parts of CPG that you might want to contact, as well as Anthem and Kaiser and IMED and Fidelity and Express Scripts and everyone. Um, it's designed to be cut in half and printed double-sided and cut in half. We used to laminate these and hand them out when we were there in person. So don't let the formatting throw you. Um, go ahead and, and give that a, a, you know, save that link, download the file, print it out, whatever works for you. Uh, so you can know how to get in touch with us when you need something. And then before I move into the questions, um, I just need to remind you that our plan documents control the benefits that the plans provide. And I've tried to be accurate and complete in this presentation, but in the event that something that I've said is contrary to the written plan documents, those plan documents will govern. And nothing that I've said should be taken as health investment tax or legal advice. You'll want to consult with your own personal professionals and advisors on those topics. So, yes. Um, 
the the applications on the phone like Help Me Help. Uh, is there one for Kaiser? Is, mm -hmm. is the script available? Are those apps something that you can also share? Yes. Thank you. Oh. So Kaiser has an app, Anthem, iMed, Express Scripts, all have apps. Fidelity has an app. Um, and, and information about that is also on the contact card, I believe. There's a, a, you know, some information about um, their website and whether or not they have an app. So yes, Health Equity has an app. 